Uh, hopefully, everyone can see the title page. Yep. Uh, so, um, so yeah. So the, my presentation is in two parts. And um, the first, I'm, I'm just going to give an introduction to Yorkshire and the history of spider recording in the county up to the end of 1981, which was when the first atlas was privately published by Clifford Smith. And then the, oops, don't know what And then the second part is summarising Yorkshire spiders after that point um, to the present day, which for the purpose of this talk is to the end of 2021. So for those that don't know Yorkshire, here it is. It's a vast county in Northern England, um, covering a variety and various landscapes. And it stretches almost from the North Sea to the Irish Sea. There's only 14 kilometers of dry land in Lancashire separating the two coasts. And given its large size, it is split into biologically uh, split into five vice counties for biological recording purposes and um, which are labeled here and um, for those that aren't that familiar with vice what vice counties they have remained fixed since the mid 19th century um so actually the vice county of what's in new yorkshire um covers administrative cumbria lancashire greater manchester and lincolnshire covers 15,797 square kilometres. That represents 12% of England. So there's a lot of uh, lot of land to cover. In just over 7,000 kilometres, so just under half the county are actually protected landscapes. Uh, we've got three national parks, the Yorkshire Dales, uh, the North of York Moors, and uh, a very small portion of the Peak District National Park. And they cover just under half of the protected landscapes and then the other half are the areas of outstanding national beauty which are the ones in uh the red polygon and you'll note um particularly jim uh that vice county 61 uh, has no protected landscapes in it the yorkshire walls which extends uh sort of approximately so here like that in an arc um uh are not uh, a protected landscape and i'll return to these protected landscapes later in the presentation Topographically, Yorkshire is defined by two areas of higher ground, uh, divided by low-lying landscapes. We've got to the west, the Pennine Chain, the spine of England that runs uh, through the middle north-south. Um, the north is largely coincident with the Yorkshire Dales National Park, and uh, the Pennines continue beyond the uh, protected landscapes, reaching the Peak District here, just outside Sheffield. Um, and then uh, the second area of Highland is the incised plateau North York Moors in the county's northeast, and uh, lower lying, though clearly discernible ridges of higher land in uh, the Howardian Hills, which are here, and the Yorkshire Wolds there. And separating these two upland uh, features are the Vales of Mowbray and York, and uh, the uh, Vale of Pickering, which uh, follows the boundary between Vice Counties 61 and 62. Yorkshire's topography is also intimately connected to its geology, and this has relevance to understanding distributions of spider. So broadly speaking, in Yorkshire, you travel uh, um, from east to west is to travel back in time. So you've got the chalk, Cretaceous chalk cliffs um, on the coast, uh, the Triassic sandstones, uh, sorry, the Jurassic mudstones and sandstones of the North York Moors, uh, the Triassic sandstones um, underlying the heaths, east of York and the thin band of magnesium dolomitized dolom limestone uh, running north-south and then you've got the uh, carboniferous limestone of the Dales and the coal measures which fed the industrial revolution in the south. And the significance of these protected landscapes, topography and geology are its influence on the county's biotopes and habitats that um, uh, affect 430 species of spiders that have been recorded in Yorkshire to the end of 2021. But where did our knowledge of the county's spider fauna start? And this is the first main part of the substantive element of my presentation. And it started a long time ago, probably far longer ago than many people realise. 
Uh, so this is where I'm going to start. So it started actually um, really in uh, the 17th century uh, with Martin Lister, who was born in Buckinghamshire, but moved to the South Yorkshire Dales in Craven um, after he graduated from Cambridge as a doctor. Uh, he married a local girl and he, they lived in this building in the photograph. Now, in, in, in the book that was published, the front cover on the left, the building was described as being as in rack and ruin, um, but it's now been uh, modernised and inhabited. Um, and he published a series of works in which one volume was on the spiders, uh, well, on the arachnids rather, and he said he described 34 species of spider, three harvestmen and one mite, and he concluded there was very little likelihood of more species being discovered in Britain. Um, fortunately, he was wrong. Um, uh, some of his uh, comments must be taken into account that when he was working, the microscope had only just been invented, so he probably thought that all the money spiders were just babies of the bigger spider. But significantly, um, 12 modern day species can be recognised from his descriptions. And, that the, and also significantly, he assigns locations which are still exi in existence today. So some of his records are actually the oldest records known probably in Britain, certainly in Britain, probably in Europe and possibly globally, where you can say a particular species of spider was recorded at a particular place. And I've been able to map based on the, hec on the hectares, the distribution of his species um, taken from his book. Uh, he recorded species that we recognize today as Araneus diadematus, Araneus quadratus, Inoplanatha rivata and Pissora mirabilis. Um, obviously this, when he was writing them and describing them, didn't follow the Linnaeus classification system. He was uh, just describing them in long Latin names. So um, the, there's an element of translation involved, but um, it's quite easy to imagine Martin Lister sort of recording these spiders as he was sort of going on an informal walk and then perhaps ending in the local pub and checking its windows for Zigiella ex notata. So um, this map uh, is as accurate as can be. Um, and it sort of map basically maps the distribution of named species in Yorkshire in the 17th century, which I think is when you, which is uh, the start. However, recording as we would recognise it today commenced in facially her suit earnest um, some 200 years later. And the earliest modern records with a binomial name are attributable to, all to the, uh, these three individuals, the fathers of British arachnology, who are pictured here and um and they were active in the 1850s and 1860s so in and around 1850 richard henry mead who was a bradford-based sturgeon uh stooped down and collected a spider now it's probable that he sent the specimen to be identified to either john blackwall or octavius picard cambridge um and they subsequently identified it as in their taxonomic knowledge know how Nerian errands but it's now poor Homer and in doing so Mead submitted the very first modern spider record for Yorkshire in the SRS database approximately 137 years before the National Spider Recording Scheme came into existence. Blackwall in his 1864 History of the Spiders of Great Britain and Ireland makes reference to a further 27 species from Yorkshire, including species such as Amorobius ferox, Zigiello ex notata again, Ozit Tyler Platicola, though he used the names of the day. And so the beginnings of a county list emerged from the quills of these early naturalists. First published Yorkshire list was in 1907, compiled by Picard Cambridge, and he collated records from various individuals, including prominent Yorkshire based arachnologist William Falconer. And he started recording in the 1890s, and by the Edwardian period, around 214 species in modern taxonomy had been recorded within the county. And the list is quite uh, generic, you know, it makes it's typical of the day. They just say near Huddersfield or near Leeds, which of course was based on the settlement limits and how they understood them in the late Victorian and Edwardian period. So mapping and understanding 
uh, the distribution of spiders in this sort of period of time is challenging because obviously Huddersfield and Leeds have extended considerably since then. So following in Picard's footsteps, Anne Pooter was the headmaster of a school in the village of Wilbilly, um, which is near uh, the outskirts to the slightly larger settlement called but looks like it's pronounced as Slathwaite but it's actually pronounced Slowitz and that's near Huddersfield which is pronounced Huddersfield. Falconer can probably be considered the first county recorder as we might recognise the position today and though he lacked digital recording apps obviously he made up for in pen and ink producing copious articles and records detailing his and contemporaries recording efforts and as a result of that um he increased the county list to 320 species and for the first time he produced uh, lists for each of the vice counties. So this list, this table here is um, based on taxonomic, uh, so on the Edwardian taxonomy. I haven't had the time to edit it to bring it down to modern taxonomy. Um, but it also, uh, this work has revealed um, some quite uh, interesting uh, complexities and uh, two of which I'll briefly mention. Um, there's a species that he described as new to science, um, uh, which, sorry, it's described by Picard uh, as new to science, collected by himself from Leeds in 1905, and uh, he called it Semeticus adeptus. Semeticus adeptus uh, was subsequently uh, synonymized uh, and placed in species Tometicus graminicola, which is Hylophantes graminicola of today, but there's some confusion and complications because the World Spider Catalogue synonymizes Adeptus with Centromus solarius, which is not published, uh, sorry, not found in Britain. Now the Falconer collection is in the the label's all fading, um, so it's not possible to locate the specimen to decide what it actually is. Um, and so uh, it would be brilliant to go back and actually see whether we've got, uh, whether it is Centromus solarius or what is probably actually Highlight Fentes Um A second example, uh, which is a species that I think has been lost to Britain in the sense that people have forgotten it was ever in, on the list in the first place. And that's this money spider that was recorded just outside um Middlesbrough um and so far as I'm aware it's only ever been recorded once in 1909 it's a species called Hypsilestes florens and it's a sister taxon Hypsilestes jacksoni a wetland species that's found in northeast Yorkshire um it's known from the North, North America so it's probable that it, it was a adventive but then again um we've got the genus Mermesis in this country and um so it's tantalising that maybe there's other species, uh, it, this species is remaining um, in northeast Yorkshire. It's retained on the British list until the mid 1950s and then just disappeared for some reason. And I haven't been able to find anything to explain why. So moving through, sort of the interwar years were quite quiet as this graph shows. This is the number of records uh, in Yorkshire um, progressing through the years. Um, and then there was somewhat of a hiatus until the late 1950s. And then this coincided with the arrival of Clifford Smith. And anyone that does Yorkshire, anyone that lives or records spiders in Yorkshire um, will come across the name Clifford Smith. And the herald of his, his arrival heralded a uptick in spider recording efforts. Um, and it, the records exploded, which led to the first Yorkshire Atlas being pro privately published in March 1982. So recording efforts spurred on by Clifford resulted in almost complete, complete coverage. There's 200 hectares, that's 10 by 10 kilometer OS squares and 93% coverage had at least one species recorded uh, in the county. Um, and by the end of 1981, a total of 390 species had been recorded. And his efforts which, with others resulted in the privately published Atlas of Yorkshire Spiders, which was the first example of a atlas published in Britain of spiders being mapped at a resolution at the sort of 10 kilometer scale. So there were earlier atlases that just colored in a 
the whole of the vice county if, if a species has been recorded. Um, this is obviously a much more granular detail. And this, uh, this map illustrates the state of play in terms of species richness at the point when um, Clifford Smith's atlas was published. Although Clifford Smith died before this, this uh, these two national atlases were published in 2002, his leadership and efforts were instrumental in delivering these uh, 20 years ago. And um, I'm sure the, uh, dot, the understanding of ecologies and distributions particularly were of, uh, would be less uh, if it wasn't for his efforts. So returning back to the graph, um, this is the post-1981 period um, the, uh, and records have continued uh, with continuous recording effort ranging between 500 and 1500 records annually. And I think it's pleasing to note that much of Yorkshire has been resurveyed in this period. 188 hectares have been visited since January 1982, with a substantial proportion in the last decade. So where we stand now uh, is just under 60,000 records in Yorkshire to the end of 2021. And almost you know, a substantial number have been revisited since the last atlas. And this is the species richness map. Uh, the 40 year period since the first atlas has maintained and enhanced the spider recording effort. 414 species have been recorded, compared with 390 up to the atlas, and just under 40 species were added to the county since 1981, bringing the total to 430 species, with a further six species only known from heated biomes, so butterfly houses and greenhouses. So it's what the, these maps compare the two phases, and I, I just want to sort of um, draw attention to the warmer colours. Uh, so more species are being recorded, uh, increasing our known distribution individually and collectively, and resulting in a better knowledge of species richness and species distribution in the county. And this table, um, in combination with the maps, provides strong evidence of improved recording effort since the first atlas was published. Twice as many hectares with 100 plus species and 50% more hectares with 50 or more. The number of hectares with fewer than 10 species are a third of the total in Clifford's day, which suggests a more even recording effort across the county. If we return to the maps, Note the cluster of well-recorded hectares in the York area. So that's the York area is here. Um, this suggests that perhaps 1981, uh, spider recording was broadly by one individual, which it was, uh, Clifford Smith. Whereas the post atlas period was by multiple individuals, partly explaining why there's a lot more warmer, redder colours uh, more recently. And the raw data supports this view. So I mentioned six, just under 60,000 records. Uh, from the start from 1800s all the way through to 2021, a quarter of them were Clifford Smith's alone. Um, whereas my my efforts are a meagre, just over 5,000 records. Um, Clifford recorded 331 species. I've acquired 289 in 20 years. So it's a he was a, a monumental individual. Um, and just to demonstrate. If, if, if his records were ex excluded, um, it would be a completely different picture um, in terms of our understanding. Uh, whilst coverage would be similar, the proportion of he hectares with fewer than 50 species is almost half if you excluded Clifford's records and a third when included. And Clifford's efforts increased the proportion of hectares with 50 or more species by 12%. So, in terms of individuals that have recorded in Yorkshire, his, his, he, he single-handedly has contributed a substantial narrative to our understanding of the counties uh, and probably realistically Northern England's spider distributions. But there's practical and applied uh, aspects to analysing the data sets. Um, so the National Review by Peter Harvey and colleagues identified that 
20% of the British fauna assigned near threatened or one of the IUCN threat categories compared with just 2% in York of the Yorkshire fauna. Um, but it's possible to assess the spider fauna in a Yorkshire context to define which taxa are county rare and county scarce. The data may allow the application of a county red list, uh, but this would require more detailed analysis that I've yet to contemplate. So for the purposes of a new atlas, I focused on considering which taxa are rare or scarce in the county context. And I applied a proportionate threshold based on the national approach. A nationally scarce species is recorded between 16 and 100 hectares as for a total of 2,908 in Britain. So proportioning it down to 200, Yorkshire rare is two or fewer hectares or Yorkshire scarce between three and seven. And this has identified that about 102 species in Yorkshire are scarce in the county or rare, uh, representing about 24, one in four species recorded in, in the county. So mapping these Yorkshire rare and scarce species starts to highlight regions within the county that are of potential arachnological significance. Uh, so this would point the sperm point, which is the sand spit uh, on the coast, the Humberhead peatlands, which is uh, low-lying areas around uh, Doncaster, and the associated cars, Potterick car, for example, the Vale of York, and they've got the Heathlands, uh, and Mallandale, which is this area here. Now, this is, these are known localities of wider biodiversity importance. I'm sure there's an element of recording effort here too. Um, and how I do split the uh, different categories will have uh, influenced those patterns to some extent. But I think, so there is more work to done to tease out uh, what this data is saying. But as a first sift, I think it's not showing up any anomalies. And I think the general narrative would remain broadly consistent that the, these locations in the county are of significance for their spider fauna. So briefly, returning back to uh, the Yorkshire protected landscapes, um, there's obviously national nature reserves within there and triple SIs, which can be analysed but beyond the scope of this presentation. Um, the table here summarises recording efforts using the proportion of tetrads, two by two kilometres, as a proxy and species richness. And I just note that the figures for the Peak District relates to that bit of the Peak District National Park that resides in Yorkshire, not the whole National Park, which extends into Derbyshire. So 331 species have been recorded across all protected landscapes. So about three quarters of the York Yorkshire's uh, fauna. Um, 319 in national parks, 236 in the OMBs. 76 species have a British rarity status uh, or a Yorkshire rarity status, status, and core species are threatened with extinction. A further 23 range restricted, i.e., Yorkshire rare or Yorkshire scarce, have been recorded in these protected landscapes. 26 of the 27 species, that's 6% of Yorkshire's fauna, only known from national parks. Um, so that's the four York IUCN threatened species plus the Yorkshire rare and Yorkshire scarce are only known for the national parks in, in the county. So they're really important. The, the national parks are really important for our uh, scarcer and rarer taxa. I think I'll just highlight and I've highlighted Yorkshire Dales and Nidderdale AOMB. Um, because uh, these areas are joining each other, but note that the Nidderdale AOMB is uh, uh, much more poorly recorded. Um, I don't really know why. Uh, it just might be that uh, people have travelled through the AOMB to get to the Yorkshire Dales. So just to wrap up quickly, analysing the data set has identified lots of what we do know and the individuals behind the records. But it has identified gaps in our knowledge, which can act as a challenge uh, to uh, update our knowledge, obviously, but also for any third edition. And this uh, final this, this uh, map here um, illustrates uh, the uh, hectares where there's been no records at all, um, of which there were a few. They're in grey, and uh, the hectares which have not had any records uh, this century, so the last sort of twenty odd years. Um, 
And 22 species recorded by Clifford Smith and others uh, have not been recorded since 1981. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Fascinating stuff. Um, are there any questions? I've got a question. Well, not a question, really, a comment, uh, rather. I'm glad that you acknowledged the work that uh, Clifford did in Yorkshire. M most of my collecting, uh, I no, no longer collect, but I have my, maintain an interest, was done up to about uh, 1998. And when I first started in arachnology, it was in the uh, late 70s. And Clifford was a great help to me in my initial introduction to arachnology. But uh, you haven't mentioned Mike Roberts, who um, for quite a period of time had uh, a group which Lawrence was a member of, I think, who used to meet yep. in Mike's cellar. And uh, that was an enormous help for anybody who had an interest in acknowledge uh, to be uh, at the foot of a master like yeah that here. sure it, I mean there, there, there are many oh, you're, you're right I, I I didn't deliberately leave Mike out but obviously you know Sheffield uh, based arachnologist and I, I suspect many of the uh, his paintings were of specimens were possibly Yorkshire specimens too um, uh, lack of time and uh want you know wanting to sort of try and uh, keep to a, a yeah. time frame um but yeah you're absolutely right there, there's mike roberts i mean you know jeff oxford uh, uh jim putris who are both uh, actively recording today um have you know really increased the records in vice county 61 and 62 so the eastern counties which were always thought to be uh when i became the county recorder it were sort of like the uh, the, the less well studied counties largely because they were away from the big conurbations and dominated by agriculture they've really substantially uh, increased our knowledge particularly jim uh, in the more sort of uh, central parts of vice county 61 in and, and sort of south of the north york moors yes um but it, everyone that contributes a record in yorkshire um uh, does so uh, with great acknowledgement and uh, thanks. <laughs>